Here's your news for today. We've got tons of Apple new product news, LG Velvet launch date, Samsung news and more. So let's get right into it. We have a new report from Bloomberg and Mark Gurman telling us all about the upcoming products that Apple have in the pipeline. We know all about the iPhone 12, expected to come a little bit later than was originally planned for obvious reasons, some delays there, but Apple are not finished there. They're working on a ton of new products. In relation to the iPhone, Mark Gurman also confirmed loads of other rumors we've heard about Apple adding LiDAR sensors to at least the pro models of the iPhone 12 series phones. The same LiDAR sensor that goes into the iPad Pro, this will be coming to those pro phones. These phones though may be delayed and face the longest delays as opposed to the non-pro phones. He also reiterated his assertion that the new flat edge design is coming to the iPhone 12 series. This has been confirmed by all of the very well-known Apple leakers. So yeah, a flat edge design coming to the iPhone 12 phones. We should also be seeing a substantial iMac refresh this year with some updated internal components. Also an updated 14 inch MacBook Pro. So that leads on from the updates we saw in the 16 inch MacBook Pro, a bigger screen, better screen to body ratio for that screen as well. Also a refresh for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, according to Mark Gurman coming in maybe October or November, so towards the end of the year. He also said that any rumors about Apple possibly using underscreen fingerprint sensors in phones this year doesn't have any basis, so that doesn't look to be coming. We heard rumors from Ming-Chi Kuo who said that Apple may actually be producing an iPhone SE Plus that could be coming next year. I'm still skeptical on that one. I don't know if that would really be in Apple's plans. This is apparently gonna look like the iPhone 11, but be a cheaper version. And they may use a fingerprint sensor mounted on the side in the power button and not use Face ID in that phone. I think that would go down really, really well with consumers if it was a really good price, just like the iPhone SE this year. But neither of the rumors are telling us anything about underscreen fingerprint sensors. So safe to assume Apple probably aren't considering this for their products, at least in the next year. And the big news regarding Apple is that they want to, as soon as possible, use ARM-based chips in computers and their MacBook Pro models. So getting rid of the Intel-based chipsets and using uh, chipsets with ARM designs, just like they do in their iPhones. The A13 chipset and its previous chipsets have all used ARM designs for the chipset. So they want to use a very similar type of chipset in their MacBook Pros. The high performance cores that they're designing apparently are called Firestorm and the high efficiency cores are called Ice Storm. Apple wants to get these chips into MacBook Pros as soon as possible, so it will have its own chipsets in all of its iPhones, all of its mobile devices, and even its computers too. Moving on, we got some iPhone SE and Tutu scores, and Tutu just benchmarks a lot of different phones, a lot of different chipsets, so you can see how powerful they are. And it looks like Apple have underclocked the chipset in the iPhone SE. So one of the massive draws of this phone is that the iPhone SE uses the A13 chipset in there, which is the same chipset as you find in their most expensive iPhone 11 Pro Max phones. So that's a really good deal, but it looks like Apple have underclocked or reduced the performance of the chipset as compared to those phones. The iPhone SE scored 492,000 more or less on the Antutu score, whereas the iPhone 11 series can get even higher than 520,000. So definitely a difference in performance there. Why is there such a difference in the performance? Apple may have reduced the performance to get a bit more battery life out of the phone. The iPhone SE is very small as a phone, much smaller than all the other phones that Apple sells right now. So it obviously has a smaller battery too because it has a much smaller screen as well. So Apple may have reduced the performance of that chipset to get a bit more battery life out of the phone. If this was an Android phone and a brand was underclocking chipsets, there would be a huge stink. No one would accept it and everyone would be sending their phones back. But when it comes to Apple, these things don't matter. The day-to-day -day feeling and usage you're gonna get out of this phone will be literally unnoticeable in terms of difference between this and other phones. It's completely irrelevant. You get a bit better battery life. The screen is smaller anyway. You don't need that performance. So yeah, I don't think it's a big problem for Apple or this phone specifically. There won't be any differences, but yeah, only Apple can get away with this sort of thing. We now have an official launch date for the LG Velvet. This is coming actually very soon. LG, I think, have done a really good job with this phone so far in terms of pushing the phone and marketing the phone. Seems to have a lot of hype. 
and I think the new design that they're using seems to have gone down pretty well with most people. The 6th of March at 10 o'clock in Korea it will be launched. We still don't know about availability outside of Korea, but LG has said they want to sell this in a lot of different markets, including the US and Europe and Japan as well. We also got this leak today, which apparently shows the full detailed specs of the device. And for a mid-range phone, I think it's looking pretty good. Confirmed is the Snapdragon 765G, although that was officially confirmed by uh, LG in their promo video. In this leaked spec sheet, we get a 16 megapixel selfie camera. We don't know how good the quality is, but 16 megapixels is okay. We know it's housed in that U-shaped notch. According to these specs anyway, 16 megapixel selfie camera on here, and we know thanks to the promo video that it will be in a U-shaped notch. A main image sensor of 48 megapixels. It doesn't say which sensor that is, but I would assume it's the IMX586 from Sony, which is a very mid-range sensor. It's a very decent sensor. It's not too expensive and is usually used in phones like this. There's also an eight megapixel and a five megapixel. Definitely one of those being an ultra wide, the eight megapixel would be the ultra wide. Five megapixels, I would assume is a macro camera. It could be a zoom lens, but it seems quite low resolution for a zoom lens. So I would more assume it would be a macro camera, maybe a depth sensor in there. So maybe no zoom camera in this setup. Eight gigabytes of RAM in here, which is absolutely plenty for a phone like this, a mid-range phone, definitely enough, even enough for flagship phones. An IP68 rating apparently, which is definitely important for a lot of people, and a 4,300 milliamp hour battery. Again, with the chipset, it's not the most high powered chipset, so 4,500 or 4,300 milliamp hours is plenty for that phone. Let's wait and see what the phone actually looks like in real life, but from the designs and the promo videos we've seen, I think it comes with a new and unique design, so definitely some interest in that phone. Super fast Wi-Fi is coming and coming very soon. This is news that towards the end of the year, the six gigahertz band will be opened up by the FCC and routers, for example, or any Wi-Fi products can have chips that support the six gigahertz band, which should mean much faster speeds for Wi-Fi. Right now, there are two different bands that we use for Wi-Fi. One of them is 2.4 gigahertz and the other is a five gigahertz band. So adding the six gigahertz band will just allow way more space for Wi-Fi. And that means that people that are connecting on Wi-Fi close to you won't be clogging up the system. We have more space, so it should mean that Wi-Fi speeds have more room and you get more space, more speed from the Wi-Fi. The FCC is apparently opening up more than 1,200 megahertz of spectrum in the six gigahertz band, which is a lot of space comparatively to what we have now. So that means even if more people are on the router or in your area, you should have more space. It's not that the spectrum is faster per se, but you have less people clogging up the system and so you should see faster speeds. New devices that support this band may be coming towards the end of this year at the earliest, 2021 more likely. Phones that are coming out now that support Wi-Fi 6 won't be able to support this new six gigahertz band. You have to look out for products that support Wi-Fi 6E, that means six extended. That is the new band, new spectrum, and products will have to support Wi-Fi 6E, but I'm sure smartphones for example, all Android phones and Apple phones will be supporting this as soon as possible because Qualcomm, who make all the Android chipsets, Broadcom and Apple have all signed up and said they will support this new band. Let's get up to date with all the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 news and news in general. So firstly, the S20's Hulk problem. This was a problem where the screen actually turned green at a certain battery percentage and screen brightness has apparently been fixed or is being fixed. This luckily is a software fix and not a hardware problem, which definitely is very good thing to know because this was a big problem. If your battery was pretty low, your screen brightness is low, it would just go green, which obviously is a big problem, but it will be fixed. OnePlus phones apparently are, well, at least some of them anyway, are having this problem too. So this means that it's definitely a Samsung screen issue because they both use Samsung panels but easily fixed with a software update, luckily. Also rumors about the upcoming Note 20 series. A couple of model numbers were found recently that show a Note 20 phone will be supporting 4G only. And that's a really good thing. It means that there will be some 4G only models and they are usually cheaper. 
Most of the real high-end models now have 5G, which is expensive and most people aren't gonna use it anyway for the next few years. So a 4G model coming in the Note series. This was a model number that would be used in Europe and that uses the Exynos chipset versions. So obviously Samsung's Exynos chipset versions will keep a 4G model. All of the Snapdragon versions have to have 5G because if you're using that chipset, you have to buy the 5G modem from Qualcomm. There are also some reports out of Korea that say that Samsung may be ditching the time of flight sensor in the camera setups of the Note 20 series. They don't use a TOF sensor in the S20, but they do include it in the S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra. It doesn't really make a huge difference to the way that the cameras behave. It can slightly help with some portrait modes. I could see why they would take it out if they don't need it. But to be honest, we've got Apple putting a huge LiDAR sensor on the back of iPhones, and that's basically a time of flight sensor. So if Samsung take it away, that would be seen to be taking something away from the phone that Apple is adding. So yeah, probably don't believe that one. I would say they would keep the TOF sensor in there anyway, even if it doesn't really do much. That's it for your news today. Sub if you liked it. Also check out the other channel for way more content, and I'll see you next time.